Hi Josh here, and in this video we will be making a steady rest to fit my handy lathe. So when I bought my lathe, I did, it did not come with a steady rest, so, and since it's a handy, the parts are kind of hard to find, so pretty much my only option is to make my own. Now for those of you who don't know, a steady rest sits on the bed of the lathe and holds the work steady, obviously, but unlike something like a follow rest, the steady rest stays in one place where a follow rest will follow the tool. This is gen a steady rest is generally used for when a tailstock is either in the way or impractical to use. Which I guess if it was in the way, it would be impractical to use. So that's a bit redundant. The plan. <laughs> anyway, what I'm doing is um, buying a uh, steady rest from Tools for Cheap and modifying that to fit my lathe. Now the reason I'm getting it from Tools for Cheap is because their steady rests are in two pieces. So you have the steady rest and then the base. This will make it very easy to modify to or adapt it to my lathe. Igor, get my wrench. Yes, master. So the first step, get a chunk of steel. So the second step is to face all the sides. Now I do this to basically so I have a square area to clamp to. This will make it a lot easier when I'm jumping back and forth from the lathe to the mill. So after I face all four sides, I have to cut a V groove into it. Now I really remember seeing a tool for this, but I could not find it again. So what I ended up doing was tramming my uh, mill head to 45 degrees. The way I did this is I got uh, something called a pro tram. It's basically two dial gauges across a, a spreader bar. I could have made it, but I didn't have the time. Anyway, I put this into the head of the mill and then I used a sign bar to uh, gauge against. Now a sign bar is basically a, a bar that you can put spacers at one end to basically make a triangle and you use the sign uh, formula to calculate how much spacers you need to generate a certain degree. So once I got the correct amount of spacers set up, I put it underneath the sign bar inside my vise. I kind of use the vise to hold the sign bar steady. You really shouldn't, but it was rolling all over the place. So once I got that onto the vise, I moved that the I moved the table over to the pro tram and squared it, squared the head off to the pro tram. So once all the head, once the head was all trammed up, is that the right way to say that? Anyway, so once that was all done, I used uh, just a normal end mill to cut a V groove into the chunk of steel. Now I'm not worried about depth, right? Depth. I am kind of worried about depth, but I'm more worried. I'm not worried about depth. This I can adjust for later. I left plenty of room in the chunk of steel for me to remove material to level everything out. Now once the uh, V groove was cut, I placed it back onto my lathe, put a dial gauge onto my tool holder, had the dial gauge sit onto the uh, piece, onto the base, and moved it back and forth to figure out how much material I had to cut off on the other end for the flat spot. See, my uh, lathe bed has a V groove on one side and a flat spot on the other. So I had the V groove cut and now it's time to cut the flat spot. Now I cut a little off and I brought it back to the lathe to check everything out. Then I cut it a little more off and I moved. I basically went back and forth until it was pretty close. Now to get it the rest of the way and to make sure everything was sitting uh, flat onto the lathe bed, I start started scraping. Now the way I did it, and I don't know if this is the way you're supposed to do it, but the way I did it is I got marking fluid. I placed marking fluid onto the uh, ways of the base, dropped it base on or placed the base onto the bed of the lathe, slid it in one direction, removed it, and in any metal spot I scraped. 
Now, I found I used a the dial gauge to check for squareness and levelness. So if it was a little out of square, I would kind of tr try to twist it in the square when I ran it along the bed of the lathe, and then that would then I'd scrape where it's shiny, and that actually helps straighten it up. If it was at a level, I put more weight on one side, on the high side, did the same thing, and then we moved the shiny part. Now, my scraping tools are, are a, uh, they're not very good. I tried to find some online, I couldn't. I did find, I think one on Amazon, it wasn't Prime, but it was like $100. I only got one inch to go, and I don't do it for a living, so I'm not spending 100 bucks on, uh, some scraping tool. So what did I? So what I ended up using for scraping tools is basically a high-speed steel cutoff bit for a uh, lathe. It's just a, basically a flat piece of steel. Well, it's actually tapered, but it's kind of flat-ish. I basically ground a uh, edge on the one side, put some vice grips on the other, and use that as my scraping tool. I did find a carbide grout remover removal tool from Lowe's, but that didn't really work very well. I mainly just use the high speed steel cutoff bit. So after a couple days of scraping, I got it to where it's pretty much square and pretty much level. It doesn't have the greatest wear uh, point in the world. I had some problems that when I trammed it, it wasn't perfectly 45 and that kind of messed me up, but it's close enough for what I need it for. Basically I ran out, ran out of time to get it perfect. Oh, I ran out of time and willpower. Scraping is kind of a pain. Now comes the part that I was kind of dreading. I knew pretty much what I was going to do up to this point, but I had no idea how I was going to find the center point of the chuck in relation to the base. But I figured out a way. First step is to turn a chunk of steel to a known measurement. Now, an important thing to keep in mind is to never touch this piece of metal after it's turned. Do not remove it from the chuck. If I would have removed it from the chuck, all my measurements would have been off. Anyway, first I needed to find center. So to find center, I took a machine square, placed it on top of the base, slid it to the turn piece, and then measured from the face of the square to the front of the base. Then I flipped around to the other side of the turn piece and measured from the front from the front of the base to the face of the square. Now, taking this, those two measurements, I could find the center of the chuck to in relation to the base. Now, finding height is was a little bit more, tri or not height, finding distance from the base to the center of the chuck was a bit trickier. The way I did it is I assembled spacers until they just barely went under. Now what I ended up having to do is one went under with a bit of a gap and another would not go under. So I just took the half of that measurement as my measurement. Anyway, then I took that measurement, added half of the diameter of the turned piece, which would actually be radi the, what would that be? Radius? I don't know. I stunk at geometry. Anyway, I took that measurement, added them together, and that was the distance from center my chuck to the top of the base. Then I subtracted that number from the distance between the bottom of the steady rest to the center of the steady rest. The number that I got from this was the amount of material that I had to remove off the top of the base. So to do that I placed it into the chuck found the top of the base in relation to the end mill and then just cut off all the material. Now while I was in the mill I also drilled the center hole that would have the clamping bolt go through and two other holes that will hold two pins. These two pins will align the steady rest and the base together. The final step is to make the clamp. Now this is pretty easy. I just found a uh, chunk of steel that was the same width as my base, put it onto the mill, milled out two flat spots on either end so that they were level with each other, 
milled out a slot in the middle. Then I milled out a slightly bigger slot that would that the head of the bolt would slip into. This way the bolt won't, won't turn. So to test it I put some material into the lathe and then turned it from the closest to the uh, steady rest and I went like a couple like about a foot. Then I measured closest to this I measured the dia the diameter of the material closest to the uh, steady rest to the farthest point that I turned. It was about I think it was two ten thousandths or two thousandths of an inch off. I know that's a big difference. I don't remember. I was also using a micrometer in, or a caliper instead of a micrometer, which also threw it off. So from the measurement I got, it wasn't bad, but I would have preferred better. So if you're a bit confused, I'm writing, making a write-up. It'll probably be done by the time you watch this video. So I'll have a link either in the video or in the description below. If you liked, like. If you have any questions, leave a comment. Uh, follow me on Google+. Go to my webpage. And uh, that's it. Thanks. Bye!